Hello class, well done, you're here, so it's time for the new chapter. This is part 5A, Sports Superstitions. Okay, let's get the show started. Part 1, Vocabulary, Sports. Everybody, this is a quiz, a short exam. Look at the pictures, very good. What sport do you associate with? All right, so the first one, which sport? The second one is clear, it's basketball, and that's a basketball hoop. Do it with your friends. Time for me to wait. A few minutes later. Well done, let's check them together. All right, number one, badminton, a birdie. Number two, basketball, basketball hoop, as I told you. Number three, ice hockey, a hockey stick and puck. Number four, ice skating, ice skates. Number five, riding a bike or bike riding, a bike helmet. Number six, skateboarding, a skateboard. Number seven, gymnastics, a ribbon and ball. Number eight, baseball, a glove and ball. Number nine, table tennis, or we call it ping pong, a paddle and a ball. Number ten, judo, karate, take one do, or take one do, a black belt. And judo was my favorite when I was young. You did great, a very good start. Now, tell me, what is the name of your favorite sport? Right? Very good. Let's continue. Now, everyone, people and places, I need you to match the words and pictures. For example, number one, fans. Yeah? Take your time. Do it. You can stop the video as well. Very good. Now, listen and check. 3.2 Sports People and places 3 Captain. Seven. Coach. One. Fans. Five. Players. Two. Referee. Umpire. Nine. Spectators. The crowd. Four. Team. Eight. Stadium. Six. Sports arena. Well done. But that's just a start. Follow me. Now, everyone, match the places and sports. For example, a tennis court or a basketball court. All right? You can use the pictures to help you. Very good. Stop the video and do it yourself. Very good. Now check your answers with your friends. Okay, listen and check. 3.3 1. Tennis court Basketball court 2. Soccer field Baseball field 3. Swimming pool Diving pool. Four. Running track. Horse racing track. Five. Golf course. Six. Ski slope. Right, you did great. Well done. But there's another one for you. Again, follow me. You know the sports. You know the places, but do you know the words? Look, win and beat. You win a game or a competition, medal or a trophy, but you beat another team or person. Not, for example, the Red Sox won the Yankees. Actually, they beat the Yankees. That's correct. Now, I have two exercises for you. A. Complete with the past tense and past participles. Right? 
you can check Google to help you as well. B. Complete the verb column with the past tense of a verb from A. All right, very good. This is your gig. I'm gonna wait for you. A few moments later. Okay, I need you to listen and check. Let's do it. 3.4 Verbs A Beat Beat Beaten mm. Win One One Lose Lost Lost Tie Tied Tied B. 1. Costa Rica beat the U.S. 3 to nothing. 2. Costa Rica won the game 3 to nothing. 3. The Chicago Bulls lost 78 to 91 to the Boston Celtics. 4. Spain tied with Brazil 2 to 2. Well done. You did great. Now, there's just one last thing, and we're all set. And as I told you, the last exercise in vocabulary. Complete the verb column with a verb from the list. For example, professional sports people have to train every day. So train is crossed out. Take your time and do it yourself. Now check your answers with your friends. Listen. 3.5 1. Professional sports people have to train every day. 2. Don't play tennis on a wet court. You might get injured. 3. A soccer player has to try to kick the ball into the goal. 4. I've started going to the gym because I want to get in shape. 5. Our new striker is going to score a lot of goals. 6. Would you like to go swimming this afternoon? 7. My brothers do yoga and tai chi. 8. In basketball, players throw the ball to each other. Well done, you did great. Now everyone Phrasal verbs. These are some phrasal verbs. For example, warm up. It is important to warm up before you do any vigorous exercise, hard exercise. Do light exercise to get ready, warm up. Or for example, you want to get warm up for a game. My daughter works out every afternoon. Now, the, this verb means exercise at the gym. She exercises at the gym. She works out every afternoon. My team was knocked out in the semi-finals. Knocked out, eliminated. And you know, in boxing, when you knock someone out, you know, they cannot get up during the 10 counts. Well done, you did great. All the way to part two. Pronunciation. Everyone, write the words in the correct column. All right, we have the horse and bird. Two different sounds. Take your time and do it. Very well. Now listen and check. 3.6 Horse Or Or Court For Score Shorts Sport Warm up Bird Er Girl Hurt Serve, shirt, world, worse, work out. All right, but we're not done yet. Everyone, I need you to listen and write six sentences. Let's do it. 3.7 1. I got hurt working out at the gym. 2. Her serves worse than the other girls. 3. It was a tie. The score was 4 to 4. 
four. It's the worst sport in the world. Five. We warmed up on the court. Six. They wore red shirts and white shorts. All right, very good. Check your answers with your friends. These are the sentences. Well done, you did great. Part three, speaking, and that's my favorite part. It should be yours as well. I want you to speak perfectly. Now, in pairs, you and your friend, both of you, interview your partner about sports using the questionnaire and ask more questions and you can ask for more information as well for example do you like sports yes what sports do you play how often do you play sports have you ever won a cup or a trophy have you ever been injured playing sports do you prefer playing sports or watching sports how many hours do you spend a week watching sports on tv and do you go to watch a local sports team what's the ex most exciting sports event you have been to and then you can go to this question it's like a flow chart use the flow chart and interview your friend this is your gig part four reading everyone do you know of any sports players who are superstitious what do they do i know that for example lebron james does some uh, i don't know ceremony before a game but who do you know can you tell me well done now i need you to read an article about sports superstitions and complete it with a to f so you have to for example look for the first one tennis players are strange people we used f so it's crossed out this is your turn i'm gonna wait for you six and a half hours later okay you're back so let's read it together if i bounce the ball five times matthew see it all right a very weird last name if you ask me writes about sports superstitions okay number one tennis players are strange people have you noticed how they always ask for three balls instead of two and how they bounce the ball the same number of times before serving, as if the, any change from their routine might result in disaster. Number two, okay, which one is it? B, a good example is Serena Williams, the number one female tennis player. When she was once asked why she had played so badly at the French Open, she answered, I didn't tie my shoelaces right and I didn't bounce the ball five times. And I didn't bring my shower sandals to the court with me. I didn't have my extra dress. I just knew it was fate. It wasn't going to happen. Number three. E. The superstitions and rituals are not confined to the court. Goran Ivanovich, Wimbledon champion in 2001, was convinced that if he won a match, he had to repeat everything he did the previous day, such as eating the same food at the same restaurant, talking to the same people and watching the same TV shows. One year this meant that he had to watch Teletubbies, Teletubbies, I don't know what that is, a television series for very young children every morning during his Wimbledon campaign. Sometimes it got very boring, he said. Right. Number four. A. It's not only the players who are superstitious. As we were watching tennis player Andy Murray play the fourth set at Wimbledon, my wife suddenly got up and went to the kitchen. He keeps losing games when I'm in the room, she said. If I go out now, he'll win. Right. It happens to my favorite football team as well. Number five. C. Superstitions and rituals are very common among fans. Last year, a survey of British soccer supporters found that 21% had a lucky charm, anything from a scarf to a lucky coin, while another questionnaire revealed that 70% of Spanish soccer fans performed pre-match rituals, like wearing lucky clothes, eating the same food or drink, or watching games with the same people. 
And the last one, D. After my wife had left the room, Murray lost the fourth set. She returned and he won the fifth. I laughed at her and then remembered my soccer team Spurs. Tottenham Hotspurs, a London soccer team, right? Who were losing 1-0 to zero or 1-0 to oh in a in a Carling Cup. If I leave the room now, Spurs will score. I told my kids after 27 minutes of overtime, I left the room and they scored twice. Interesting, wasn't it? All right. Now I need you to read the article again and tell me, who does the article say are superstitious? Sports players, sports fans, TV spectators, or all of them? Take your time. Tomorrow. Okay, so what is your answer? Of course, all of them. Now, everyone, underline five words or phrases that you want to remember from the article. You can check your dictionary or Google and you can teach them to your friends. If now, don't. everyone, look at the photos of four more famous sports people who are superstitious. Do you know what any of their superstitions are or were? Okay, we have Sidney C C uh, Crosby, Jason Terry, Colotua, Alexander Wurz. All right? So, check Google and write down their superstitions. I'm waiting for you. All right, so let's read them together. Sidney Crosby never calls his mother on a game day, even if it's her birthday. He believes that he gets injured on the days he calls his mother before a game. When Colotor played for Arsenal, he always insisted on being the last play player to leave the dressing room after the halftime break. This was never usually a problem, however, in one game when William Gallus, his teammate, was injured, he needed tr treatment at the halftime during the match. Tora stayed in the dressing room until Gallus had been treated. This meant that Arsenal had to start the second half with only nine players. All right, Jason Terry, an American basketball player, wears the colors of his team's opponent the night before a game. Nice. If the team he's playing the next day wears black and white, then Terry wears black and white to bed the night before. He's been doing this since his playing days in college. Alexander Wurz, an Austrian racing driver, used to race with odd color shoes. Why odd colored shoes? I don't understand. The, the left one red and the right one blue. It came about when he lost a shoe before a big race and had to borrow one of a different color. After winning the race, he decided it was a lucky omen. Nice. Now, do you have any superstitions yourself? For example, when you are playing or watching sports or before an exam? All right. Share your superstitions with your friends. Time to talk. Okay, part five. You see the headphones, right? It's time to listen. But before that, I have a question, or maybe I should say two, three questions. In your country, I don't know where you watch me from, Costa Rica, Turkey, are referees well paid? Are the referees respected? Or are they unpopular? And why do you think somebody would want to become a referee? Speak with your friends, share your ideas. And after you do it, all right, you're going to hear an interview with an ex-Champions League soccer referee from Spain. Listen to part one and choose A, B, or C. Juan Antonio Fernandez Marin refereed 200 league and 50 international games. All right, very good. Listen and choose A, B, or C. Let's do it. 3.8 Part 1 What made you want to become a soccer referee, or football referee, as you would call it? My father was a referee, but that didn't influence me. In fact, the opposite, because I saw all the problems that he had as a referee. 
But as a child, I was always attracted by the idea of being a referee. And at school, I used to referee all kinds of sports. Basketball, handball, volleyball, and of course, football. I was invited to join the Referees Federation when I was only 14 years old. Were you good at sports yourself? Yes, I was a very good handball player. People often think that referees become referees because they are frustrated sportsmen, but this is just not true in most cases in my experience. What was the most exciting match you ever refereed? It's difficult to choose one match as the most exciting. I remember some of the Real Madrid-Barcelona matches, for example, the first one I ever refereed. The atmosphere was incredible in the stadium. But really, it's impossible to pick just one. There have been so many. What was the worst experience you ever had as a referee? The worst? Well, that was something that happened very early in my career. I was only 16, and I was refereeing a match in a town in Spain, and the home team lost. After the match, I was attacked and injured by the players of the home team and by the spectators. After all these years, I can still remember a mother who had a little baby in her arms who was trying to hit me. She was so angry with me that she nearly dropped her baby. That was my worst moment and it nearly made me stop being a referee. Do you think that there's more cheating in soccer than in the past? Yes, I think so. Why? I think it's because there's so much money in football today that it's become much more important to win. Also, football is much faster than it used to be, so it's much more difficult for referees to detect cheating. How do soccer players cheat? Oh, there are many ways. But for me, the worst thing in football today is what we call simulation. Simulation is when a player pretends to have been fouled when in fact he hasn't. For example, sometimes a player falls over in the penalty area when in fact nobody has touched him. And this can result in the referee giving a penalty when it wasn't a penalty. In my opinion, when a player does this, he's cheating not only the referee, not only the players of the other team, but also the spectators, because spectators pay money to see a fair contest. All right, very good, not bad. Uh, check your answers with your friends. Very good. Why did he become a referee in the first place? He was always attracted by the idea. Number two, what was the most exciting game he ever refereed? He can't choose just one. Number three, the worst experience he had ever had as a referee was when a woman attacked him. Number four, why does he think there is more cheating in soccer today? Because soccer is a big business. Right. And the last one, number five, how does he say soccer players often cheat? They fall over when no one has touched them. Now, it happens a lot. Very good, well done. Now I need you to listen to part two and complete the sentences with one to three words. You can also take notes as well. All right, but do it yourself. No help from anyone. Let's do it. 3.9 Part two. What's the most difficult thing about being a referee? The most difficult thing is to make the right decisions during a match. It's difficult because you have to make decisions when everything's happening so quickly. Football today is very fast. You must remember that everything is happening at 100 kilometers an hour. Also, important decisions often depend on the referee's interpretation of the rules. Things aren't black and white. And of course, making decisions would be much easier if players didn't cheat. Do you think that the idea of fair play doesn't exist anymore? Not at all. I think fair play does exist. The players who cheat are the exceptions. Finally, who do you think is the best player right now? I think most people agree that the best footballer today is Leo Messi. Why do you think he's so good? It's hard to say what makes him so special, but a study was done on him which showed that Messi can run faster with the ball than many footballers can do without the ball. 
Apart from his great ability, what I also like about him is that he isn't the typical superstar footballer. You can see that he enjoys playing football, and he behaves in public and in his personal life in a very normal way. That's unusual when you think how famous he is. And what's more, he doesn't cheat. He doesn't need to. All right, great, very nice. Again, check your answers with your friends. All right, let's do it together. The most difficult thing for him about being a referee is making the right decisions during a game. Number two, one of the reasons why it's difficult, it's because soccer today is so fast. Number three, making correct decisions often depends on the referee's interpretation of the rules. Number four, he thinks that players who cheat are still the exceptions. Number five, a study that was done on Leo Messi shows that he can run exceptionally fast with the ball. And number six, he thinks Messi isn't the typical superstar soccer player. And that's all there is to it. Well done. You did great. But you know, the show never stops. Great, you made it so far. Everyone in your country, is cheating considered a serious problem in sports? In what sports do you think cheating is most common? And what kind of things do people do when they cheat? I need you to take your time and write answers to these questions because I want to surprise you. Ta-da! This is your surprise. Famous cheating moments in sports. All right, the first one. Read this one. It's called Taking a Shortcut. About a marathon runner who cheated. How did she cheat? All right. Take your time and do it. I'm going to wait for you. Day two. Okay. Let's read it together. Although it isn't true that everybody in sports cheat, it is certainly true that there are cheaters in every sport. Taking a shortcut. On April 21st, 1980, 23-year-old Rosie Ruiz was the first woman to cross the finish line at the Boston Marathon. She finished the race in the third fastest time for a female runner, 2 hours and 31 minutes and 56 seconds. But when the organizers congratulated Rosie after the race, they were surprised because she wasn't sweating very much. Some spectators who were watching the race told them what had really happened. During the last mile, Rosie suddenly jumped out of the crowd and sprinted to the finish line. The marathon exercises took Ruiz's title away and awarded it to the real winner, Jacqueline Gorea, or Gorea. It was later discovered that three months earlier, Rosie had also cheated in New York City Marathon where she had taken the subway. Wow! So, in the Boston Marathon, she jumped out of the crowd during the last mile, and in New York City Marathon, she took the subway. Hmm, I guess she loved winning, but she didn't want to work hard for it. Yeah, that's how people are these days, aren't they? Now, everyone, look at the highlighted verbs in the text, these yellow ones. Which of them are used for a completed action in the past? Which one of them are used for an action that happened before the past time we are talking about? And which one of them are used an action in progress or not at a particular moment in the past? Let's see. Was, finished. These are the completed actions. Had happened. Had also cheated. Had taken. And an action in progress or at a particular time in the past wasn't sweating. All right, those are the basics. Follow me. Okay, you read that marathon cheating story, right? Now you're going to listen to the tenses. Simple past. You know it. Just a little review. 3.10 She was born in Seoul. They got married last year. On the way to Rome, we stopped in Florence for the night. 
The plane didn't arrive on time. What time did you get up this morning? Okay, so that's simple past. We use simple past for finished actions in the past. Now past continuous. Listen to this one. 3.11 1. What were you doing at 6 o'clock last night? 2. I was driving along the freeway when it started snowing. 3. While I was doing the housework, the children were playing in the yard. 4. It was a cold night and it was raining. I was watching TV in the living room. Okay, very good. So, past continuous. We use the past continuous to talk about an action in progress at this specific time in the past. I was coming to school. Suddenly, I saw an accident. I was having lunch when my mother rang, right? Rang, my, rang and called me, all right? We often use the past continuous to describe a past action in progress that was interrupted by another action expressed in simple past. Okay, very good. Now, we often use the past continuous with while for two actions happening at the same time. While I was talking to him, my phone rang, right? And the last part, we often use the past continuous to describe the beginning of a story or anecdote. But there's more. Follow me. Everyone, listen. 3.12 When they turned on the TV, the game had already finished. As soon as I shut the door, I realized that I'd left my keys on the table. We couldn't get a table in the restaurant because we hadn't booked one. All right, and that's what we call past perfect. Had plus past participle. We use the past perfect when we are talking about the past and we want to talk about an earlier past action. For example, when John arrived, they went out. When John arrived, they had gone out, right? So first John arrived and they went out. They went out before John arrived. That's the difference. All right. Now, everybody using narrative tenses together. Listen to this one. 3.13 It was a cold night and it was raining. I was watching TV in the living room. Suddenly, I heard a knock at the door. I got up and opened the door, but there was nobody there. The person who had knocked on the door had disappeared. All right. So, use the past continuous, was raining, was watching, to set the scene. When you want to talk about something, when you want to give a story. Yeah? Use the simple past, heard, got up, etc. to say what happened. And use the past perfect, had knocked, had disappeared, to say what happened before the previous past actions. So... Something happened in the past and you want to talk about something that was happening before it. So you use past perfect. Had past participle. All right, but let's practice it together. Now it's time to show me what you got. I've got two exercises for you. The first one, circle the correct form. For example, the teacher gave Robbie a zero because he had cheated on the exam. All right, and part B, complete with the simple past, past continuous or past perfect. The choice is yours. For example, the marathon runner was sweating when she crossed the finish line. Past continuous and simple past. So the choice is yours. Stop the video, take your time and do it yourself. Uh-uh, don't cheat, do it yourself. No help from anyone. Very good. Now check your answers with your friends. Put your heads together. It's my turn now. Number one. They didn't win the game, although they had trained every evening. Number two. Mike had an accident while he was driving to work. Number three. I cleaned the house when I got home. It looked great. Number four. When we arrived, the game started we got there just in time and saw the whole game 
Number five, the captain hadn't scored any goals when the referee ejected him. Number six, my son got injured while he was playing basketball last Saturday. Number seven, luckily we had stopped skiing when the snowstorm started. We were already back at the hotel. Number eight, the Lakers hadn't lost any of their games during their trip to the East Coast. Number nine, the referee suspended the game because it was raining too hard to play. Well done. Now, sport part B, number one, the accident happened when they were driving home. Number two, the crowd cheered when the referee blew the final whistle. Number three, I didn't recognize her at first because she had changed so much. Number four, the police stopped her on the freeway because she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Number five, some of the players weren't listening while the coach was talking to them. Number six, we couldn't use the ski slope because it hadn't snowed enough. Number seven, they weren't able to play tennis because they hadn't booked a court. And the last one, the player got a yellow card because he took off his shirt or he had taken off his shirt. Both of them are correct. And that's all there is to it for grammar. The hand of God. Look at this picture. Do you know about this incident? Take your time. Look at it. Who do you see? Very good. I need you to read the hand of God and complete it with the verbs in the right tenses. This is your gig. I'm going to wait for you. 12 seconds later. Okay. It was June 22nd, 1986. Argentina was playing England in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. And both teams were playing well. The score was 0-0. It was a tie. In the, the 51st minute, the Argentinian captain, Diego Maradona, respect to his name, a great player, may he rest in peace, scored a goal. The English players protested, but the referee gave the goal. However, TV cameras showed that Maradona had scored the goal with his hand. Maradona said the next day, it was partly the hand of Maradona and partly the hand of God. Later in the game, Maradona scored another goal and Argentina won the game 2-1. to one. They went on to win the World Cup. And that's a true story of the World Cup. When Diego Maradona, that legendary player, was alive. Now it's time to share your experiences. Everyone, you're going to tell your partner two anecdotes. What's anecdote? Short stories. Choose two of the topics below and plan what you're going to say. Ask your teacher for any words you need. By teacher, I mean Google, if you know what I mean. Right. Tell your partner about a time you cheated in a sport, game, or an exam. When and where did this happen? What were you doing and why did you cheat? What happened in the end? All right. A really exciting sports event you saw. Where and when was it? Who was playing? What happened? Why was it so exciting? A time you had an accident or got a sports injury. When and where did this happen? What were you doing? How did this accident happen? What part of your body did you hurt? What happened next? How long did it take you to recover? A time you saw or met a celebrity. When was this? Where were you? Who were you with? What was the celebrity doing? What was he or she wearing? Did you speak to him or her? What happened in the end? A time you got lost. What were you, where were you going? How were you traveling? Why did you get lost? What happened to you in the end? All right. And when you want to start an anecdote, you're going to do it like this. I'm going to tell you about a time when 
This happened a few years ago when I was younger. All right. You can also write your anecdotes to speak better or write the keywords. Well done. So I'm all ears. Let's talk. And this is the last set in the house. Telling a story. A magazine asked its readers to send in stories of the time they got lost. Read this story once. Why did Bethany and her husband get lost? What else went wrong? Okay, read it and answer it. Day two. Okay, you're back. Now, why did Bethany and her husband get lost? They uh, got lost because her husband followed the instructions given by the GPS, which sent them in the wrong direction. And what else went wrong? They left their dog under the table in the cafe on the road. Whoa. Okay. Now, I need you to read this story again and complete it with a connecting word or phrase from the list. For example, then, although, as soon as. All right. Again, this is your gig. Do it. Day three. All right. Now, let's do it together. This happened a few years ago. My husband and I had rented a house in Galicia or Galicia for a summer vacation. We were going to first drive to Tarragona to stay for a few days with some friends and then drive them to Tarragona from Tarragona to Galicia. The first part of the trip was fine. We were using our new GPS for the first time and it took us right to the door of our friend's house. Three days later, when we continued our trip, we put in the name of the small town in Galicia, Nigran, which was our final destination. We arrived off obediently following the instructions, but after a while we realized that instead of driving west toward Leorida, we were going north. In fact, soon we were very close to Andorra. I was sure we were going in, wrong, in, in the wrong direction. But my husband wanted to do what the GPS was telling us. It was his new toy. It was only when we started seeing mountains that even he admitted that this couldn't be the right way. So we stopped, got out of an old map and then turned around. We had wasted almost two hours going in the wrong direction. It was an awful trip because as well as getting lost, we were almost at our destination. We had another problem. We stopped for a coffee, but as soon as we got back onto the road, we realized that we had left our dog under the table in the cafe. For the second time that day, we had to return around and go back. Luckily, the dog was still there. However, although the beginning of our trip was a disaster, we had a wonderful vacation. All right, very good. And those are the connectors that you can use. Now, one more thing. I need you to write your own trip or your own experience. Write about a trip where you got lost or invent one. Make one up. All right, paragraph one. When was the journey? Where, where are you going? Who, who with and why? Paragraph two. How did you get lost? What happened? Paragraph three. What happened in the end? Okay, so you can plan and you can write it. And these are some useful languages for you. Getting lost. We were going in the wrong direction. We took the wrong exit or turn. We turned right instead of left. We didn't know where we were. And we had to turn around and go back in the opposite direction. Okay. You know the drill. The rest is yours. Whew. Finished. Finally. These chapters are getting longer and longer. But hey, you did it. Well done. So, half of success is just to be there. Just start and you go all the way to the end. It's the everyday thing. You just have to start. Stop your self-doubt, stop your self-talk, and just get things done. Move. Do something about it. Be about it. Don't complain. Until next time, my friends. And one more thing. Don't I deserve a subscribe or a like? Come on, guys. See ya.